carry prey and support Mamba. Yeah, but today, see Fedef facing the guards from the EU LCS, of course. The EU All Star team, Soas up in the top lane, joined by Yankas in the jungle, Peke in the middle lane. You can hear the crowd. Reckless is daily carry. Had a great vein game yesterday, and Mithy, the support, and uh, <laughs> Mithy also, you know, from Spain. From, from here, and yet when he walks next to Pekka, <laughs> it's always Pekka there screaming That's right true. now. And I'm sure Mithy wants to show that you know, he deserves uh, also yeah, to get yeah. some chance. Spain's given some love to Mithy, but you're right. The cheers have been it's absolutely deafening for Pekka, but guys, we, we can't lie about this. this. This is looking a little rough for the EU All-Stars, but Ooh. what do they have to do here to, to pull out a win? We've got history, but there's got to be more than history if they want to win today. I mean, the mindset's good, you have to say. I mean, talking to Reckless at breakfast, he really wants to win here. He was serious yesterday about his match, carried on vain. If they can translate that performance, it's going to be really exciting to see them because 2v2, sure, Prey and Mad Life are legends, sure. but can they actually really stand up to Reckless and Mithy, who are really in form, and Mad Life, you know, still question marks about it. Yeah, that's the thing. I think the bot lane from Europe has to do well, and then Yankos, of course, we saw his Hecarim game yesterday. We know he's this kind of jungle who can kind of take over the early game. And Benke, obviously, while he's still a fantastic player, I think he's the kind of guy you can still punish early on, so I think Yankos and the bot lane from Europe is... It's the two, you know, places we're looking. Mid lane, top lane, it will be difficult against Smeven Faker. Yeah, I mean, you're in Europe, so we're kind of looking half full, but, you know, as the LCK analyst, that mid lane is, uh, <laughs> let's say it's a mismatch. A guy who didn't play a mid lane in summer versus Faker, the greatest mid laner of all time. So, uphill battle is uh, really... Be, I mean, to be fair to Every Pecky, though. Every Vega matchup, to be fair. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that, and additionally, X Pecky, while he did have a rough uh, second day, his day one was really good when we look at that arc oh. performance. Did have excellent numbers, some solid flanks, so that's kind of the shade of X Pecky I feel like we need to see if we want uh, you to pull out a win here. However, now into champions select, and immediately Rangar taken off the board and away from Yankos. I mean, Yankos looked really strong on the Hecarim yesterday, yeah. actually making the ganks. He wasn't going for the power farming that you can with the new Krugs and the Raptors, so. Interesting to see that's the first ban, and wow, jungle focus here. All right, I mean, I guess they kind of agree with what we just talked about, that uh, Yankus being one of the guys we're looking at to kind of carry Europe through the early game here and get the big advantage. Rengar ban, I think it's just a respect for Rengar, because Yankus never been like a massive Rengar player. Lee Sin, of course, is his signature pick. Well, interesting as well, we have jungle being banned out on the side of Team Fire, but Team Ice is all about shutting down the mid lane here. So you can see where the team's priority is already pretty early in the big band. Phase. You don't normally talk about trends in your what is an invitational event like All Stars, but Team Fire have been really prioritizing Nautilus. Nautilus first pick, Nautilus flex pick. The Rek'Sai is also another interesting one, because Fengi's champion pool has never been massive, and, Re and uh, Rek'Sai specifically has been a really big contested pick. But the Nautilus up, Nautilus flex pick once again. Exactly, yeah. Flex picking, Mad Life likes to play these tank supports now. And I don't think Faker really minds these uh, three bands against him. We know he can just play Victor if he wants to be super boring. And you call him a tank support. Remember, he's also a hook support. A mad that life is the mad life. known for the mad life. So the what about the top Kens yesterday? Lick I support? Got, I got, I got nothing for sure. that. <laughs> move on, move on. <laughs> okay. Look, Officio, it's not about what happened yesterday. Focus no, on no. the Kieran now, <laughs> yes. three years ago when he played a lot of Thresh. But, you know, maybe it could be hooks versus hooks in the bottom lane. I know we're not supposed to talk about hoverovers, but please, someone play Blitzer. I think we're going to see a fairly serious pick and ban phase. Again, we might get the burst crank into one for all mode. We saw that last year, at least. This uh, first rotation, we've seen a lot of Rek'Sai come in, especially yep. when Lee Sin is being banned. We know Yanks likes to play it as well, unless he wants to really carry. And that was the thing. The European players yesterday just said, you know what? Not, you know, boring tanks top, no tank junglers, no, no, let's play carries everywhere, and they're doing the same again. And look, they're actually thinking about junglers, what will they land oh. on? Yankos, smile on his face. I think it is going to be the Elise, as well as the cannon locked in. Fishu just said it carries a lot of damage potential already early on. And it's definitely a takeaway pick from Bengi, one of his comforts. Bengi has talked about this tournament as kind of like a job interview for him. He's another one of these players like Mad Life looking for his next place. Will he show us a Bengi pick, or will he be like, no, look, I'm still spry. I may have three world championships, but I can play the Hecarim. I can play something crazy. Knowing Bengi, it's going to be standard, but we can hope. We can Let's hope. get the famous Bengi in Italy, 100% oh, win rate. Right it's never been defeated. No, You've been doing been your research, I know. I, I copied your research. <laughs> you know, okay, let's look at these win rates here. Oh, 100%. That's 100%. impressive. He's never lost. No, never lost on that champion. Might just be something like Olaf, still a good matchup into Elise. Olaf is still good in this meta, alongside 10 other junglers, because the jungle is just really, really strong right now. When was the last time you could say there was upwards of, let's say, six junglers 
in the meta. It feels like there's always been that pocket, you know, like the oh, force, yeah. the triangle. It's crazy to think that there really is that many viable picks. Well, Olaf, of course, being one of them alongside the Ezreal. They're teasing us again every time with those hoverovers, not the Kled. Ezreal now locked in for Prey, and, you know, a solid pick for him across the board. But this is a vain game now from Reckless. Oh. Against the Ezreal, it's oh. an old, old matchup that was in favor of Vayne. Get past the first few levels and then uh, especially level six. Oh, Ilawi! Wait, can an eighty count? No, no, no. We talked to Reckless. He said he wanted to bust out the old picks. He said he wanted to Iconic bust out something picks. special. I can't believe we joked about the cannon and said <laughs> this was a time when Reckless didn't have to carry. He just played cannon A to carry, and now he's actually doing it again. The build path will be really interesting to track no. as uh, Timo's being uh, considered. Let's say. Okay, don't play with my heart. All right, let's talk about what they do. We have Alawi and Kennen on the same team. Is this just the dream combo setup? I've never got to cast an Alawi game, never played in Korea. What about the wildcard factor? Because there's literally never been a top level professional game of Alawi yeah. in Korea. See, I actually had a point prepared about the Roman Empire and Chaos style and everything, but I'll do that in game because these picks here are surprising. You know, that's how you try and beat the organized, fantastic killing machine on the side of Korea here. Madlife might be the guy ruining the day for, for Europe and just picking something like Janna. Unless he wants to play Nautilus support and like really take these big team fights. But against Kennen, against Ilaoi, if you play like full disengaged support, you kind of make them useless in the team fights. And then we have the 1v1 matchup to talk to. So it looks like it's going to be the support Nautilus if there is a Jace to be taken to the top lane. A range versus melee matchup. It can go pretty well for the Jace. Oh, but Galio's locked in though. Oh. We saw it once before, the shield so powerful, Faker fearlessly diving turrets time and time again, and it looks like he will pick it up, so. You were talking about the one and zeros. There is the one and zero. Galio played it in the Casper Cup and looked strong on the pick. It is gimmicky, it is flash driven, but if you get that right engage, the wombo combo with the Nautilus will be impressive, and it is the Jace locked in last. All right, gentlemen, we talked about it. We said bot lane needs to win out. We said jungle needs to win out if you want to come out on top. Do you think they have the tools to do it at this point? Have yes. you picked a comp to do so? Uh, especially the bot lane can do really well early on against a, a tank support, as well who will get a tier. So I think the European bot lane is very, very strong here. Jungle matchup is fairly even. Yankers, of course, can gank a lot on the Elise. Top lane as well, Ilari wins. So many matchups. She's such a strong laner, but probably she often gets camped and then she becomes used. And is Jace one of those matchups? Because Jace has been the oppressive top lane pick. Smith played. Now he should be able to beat that. That's a that's a bold call. Uh, oh no, 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 wait a minute. It oh counts. yeah! Okay. Ooh. Alright, we need two analysts here for sure. What you got for this year? Garen Midlane! <laughs> All right, screw everything about serious pick and ban face here. Yeah, Europe is hey, he's going looking for a counter pick. Don't you take this away from the Divisio. <laughs> they are here to win. Oh, yeah. And more importantly, they're going to spin I mean, to do it. Can, consider the counter, Papa Smithy, here. The analyst to another analyst. Garen has a silence. Yes. Galio can get silenced. Interrupting the So the big story there is Udyr and Garen were the, kind of the two picks way back when that were the automatic cancellation of the Galio ult. Because if you had the bear stance or the silence props, of course, you go in for an auto attack when you're taunted and interrupt. So the interrupt is there. The tick damage won't be as useful because the W will heal through it. But you know what the other fun thing is? Faker and Solo Q in Korea always banned Galio, Gangplank, Garen. Those are the three picks that are the first in the Korean alphabet at the top of Jam Select. And hell, we got two of them in the mid lane. And this is smart scouting by Europe. Clearly, Faker yeah, is exactly. afraid of the Garen. There must be. There's there no must other way for it. <laughs> this is the counter to Faker. It is the Garen in the mid lane from X Pekka. He's been sitting home thinking about this. Look pick. at that steely look on the face of x -Pekka, that he knows exactly what he's doing. Well, if you believe in the steely-eyed gaze of x -Pekka, you can tweet at LOL Esports, hashtag Icewin. But if you think Faker and the Galio pick are going to carry this one home, hashtag Firewin. That's what you want to put in there as we get ready for a game. And these picks are absolutely insane. I want to hold you to something analytical, but we haven't seen any of these champions in so long. Analysis needs not apply. Hype is here to stay. <laughs> yeah, I think the last time I saw Garen was in the LPL. Yes, Amazing J. Yeah, Amazing J pulled it out, <laughs> and that's it. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. You can hear the roar of the crowd. LCK on the blue side, representing Team Fire. EU on the red, representing Team Ice. And a whole lot of creative picks coming out. Well, Bengi's so excited. Ghosted <laughs> out of the gates. He wants to get in position, ostensibly. Not quite as punishing as the flash from Peke yesterday. No, no, ghosting is fine because it will be ready, you know, by the time you they need to They got the gust as well. They really are oh, looking for an early see. pick. Fast. Early invade. Living up to his name. He's going to need to back out here. 
nothing gonna happen quite yet. Oh, he placed the ward. <laughs> Ghosting for the ward. Hey man, you gotta do what you gotta do. Exactly. Every ward. So uh, if you are watching this game and you want to play Garen in solo queue, because it will happen, uh, in this game, Pig is running, Grasp of the Undying as his keystone. Would have liked something like a Thunderlords for a little bit extra damage in there, but he clearly values the extra sustain for the Garen. Galio also, is running the Courage uh, yeah. on the other side of things. Obviously, the only the ult is the hard CC that will proc the Courage. But obviously, Fager is getting ready for the five-man ulti that procs it Ooh. with five men around, and he gets this 50% shield, basically. That makes him unkillable. I mean, Taunted is going to get hit up, but yep. it feels like a risky pick with the Galio. Kennen can auto attack to stun him out in the right circumstance. You also have so much CC to cancel this. Knock up from Zyra, Cocoon from Long Range from Yangus, the Silence from Agarin. There is tools here from uh, Team Fire to counter Faker, but not the rest of us. I was going to say, consider this. It, it is Faker. So let's just assume that he is going to have some swift tricks up his sleeve. Uh, it was a full AP Galio in the Kespa Cup, if you're wondering. So don't worry, no tanks in the mid lane. I mean, we have to be honest, though, with Galio, he's a very simple champion. Like, sure. it is limited, even though you are, like, a mechanical god. It is kind of limited on how much you can do on this champion, specifically, like, of outplays. Oh, Faker with the backwards gust. Looking each other in the eye, fearless. Waiting for someone to pull the trigger. It's pretty alpha to just waste oh, yeah. mana in front of your opponent. I mean, it's a <laughs> shout out also to, to Godby from last year. <laughs> so he doesn't need to, just need to hit Peck Peck with is it. no stranger to being alpha. He wasted Flash in the face of his opponent yesterday. And, and he's playing that... Garen, hey, guys. He was standing in a brush. There was nowhere near his opponent. That was not alpha. League of Legends hard mode is when you flash in the face of him. Oh, look at the damage, Baker. Heals through most of it, that uh, <laughs> unfortunate trade. But yeah. XJK is still pushing in in the mid lane. Well, damage over time abilities really do suck against uh, Galio. But the fact he's a physical damage dealer is a bonus. Oh, Snap running out. We'll get cursed up here. I mean, you say that, but it's worth noting is double AD uh, solo lane. Exactly. Reckless does mostly physical damage. Will, of course, have some magical damage as well. So I'm not sure how big that'll be. Ooh, Jungle's potentially Nanko's. meeting here. Oh, he actually left before he got to see if Bingo's there because he's aiming for the gank in the bottom lane. A lot of CC from Europe. He's sneaking in. Remember, these are the guys we highlighted. These were the ones we need to carry early on. And Mad Life feeling mighty cozy, but here comes Yankos. Keep your eyes on that. Red buff up and available. Look at Mad Life. In. He does get the first plus shield. He's going to back off. It's a lot of damage. Flash to safety. Goes up. Comes down. Yankos with the first blood. Red buff taken down, but now he's in trouble. Faker on the way in. It's going to be the ult. Not the ult, the teleport instead. Reckless now getting cut down as well. This is disastrous for Team Ice. Mithy trying to make the hero play, but Bengi is just too tanky. Flash takes him to safety, but the axe will it find him. It's Peke there to back him out. We'll be escorted out, but it's a two for one. They didn't respect the teleport from Faker. It's worth noting the Faker can sometimes be very much second to the roams. Yesterday, Wayless was making the big roam plays. We're gonna walk yet. back into lane. Sure. They caught up by Peke. The ignite goes down. Faker's in trouble. He's gonna heal up a decent amount. True damage is there. Oh! Spinning to win, the ice mark comes out. Mickey's backing up as well. Banky silence, locked up. There's decent damage. Red buffs on both sides. Yeah. He spins it. It's the double. Garen's back, boys. Are you kidding me? We're watching Peke on Garen against the LCK All Stars, and he's just picked up a double kill. Hey man, spin to win. It's pretty simple, but it works pretty damn effectively. And this is what happens. He didn't have the teleport to be bought, but he had the ignite for kill pressure. And this looks like kill pressure to me. Great timing. Silence first, so the shield doesn't come up from Faker, and then he just spins around him with enough damage. And now Bengi, obviously, you know, flash to get away with the ghost from him. And Pekka gets the kill with style. Looks That's even the more best beautiful. way to get a kill. Looks even more beautiful in slow motion. Take the chance. Hashtag EU mids. <laughs> Busting it out. Of course, is going to itemize the phage early on. We'll make it easier to stick to that target. But meanwhile, checking in on the top side of the map. So as doing okay in the trades, but not doing so hot in the CS department. And you just see no Alawi in Korea, at least on the professional level. It's not a massive pick in solo queue in any region. So very interesting how Smab navigates. Well, it is a lane bully in Jace, we have to be clear. Yeah, and it is a pick we've seen, you know, in the West quite a bit. North America played a little bit. Europe, Europe has played it quite a lot. Uh, for like two weeks, basically. It was a thing for two weeks. <laughs> And then everyone was like, oh, actually, never mind. If I get camped, it sucks, so I'm just not going to play it anymore. But we had players like Wizzy Chachi who loves to play it, and now Swords obviously picked it up. Curious to see what Soaz will itemize. Of course, Chachi knows that early death dance, but we got to keep our eyes on the mid lane because Peke, as long as he has that red buff, just keeps trading into Faker. But 
without team there to back him up with the ignite to burn him down, not doing a whole lot. Yeah, now it is very difficult as a melee champion in the mid lane to like chase someone down and actually kill them early on. Pekka might have to start roaming and go to some of these side lanes. Mm. Europe's uh, team here when it comes to diving bot lane is going to be insanely oh, strong. Boy. Elise, Garen, and that's like instant kills on an AD carry. Bengi's top lane though. Ghosted. Yeah, fight on her hands. So as is level six, he can look for the out. Bengi, say hello. And bye. He's just a tourist here in the top lane. He saw the level six and he was like, nope, I know, I know enough to know that does love that. Raw power of Loud Force still terrifying. You can shut her down. Always has that, always has that turnaround potential. Prey picking up the honey fruit on the bottom side, and like making a sweet way back into the laning phase. Yeah, I do wonder if Bengi knows exactly how much damage Ilawi can deal after level six, or if he's just seen the highlights. You know, where she's 10-0 and she's able to one. The red three. highlights. Exactly, the, the big red highlights. Because when you actually play against it, yes, her damage is crazy at level six, but it's not one shotting you sure. this early on in the game. Still, he might have spotted Yankos on a ward as well near the top half of the map, and just decided to play it safe. Also, the first time that Bengi and Smeb, I guess, in you know, the first tournament at least, they've played together on a team, so it is a bit of novelty there. So much damage coming in, Mark down notice, as the villain. You notice the difference though, see? The big star is Soas though. Soas oh, fights, Smeb taking so much oh, damage, Soas oh, oh. healing so much as well, will be cursed. Goes forward, flashes, maybe wants a little bit more. Tana Solo goal. kill! And that's how you deal a lot of damage. You're 1v1 here, there's no jungler for Soas, so this time he can just pop the ulti, and Smeb took a lot of extra hits from the tentacles, and he goes down. So as may have been knocked out of the 1v1 bracket, but still getting his opportunity to 1v1 on the top side. But Peke, it's a similar story. There's three members there. I don't know if he wants this fight. Goes in, still alive. Knocks down Demacia onto Bangi. Mad Life is next, and Ice is taking control. So many curveballs, but they're all working at least early. We Chaos style, baby! Chaos style, well, that is your region, of course. But this worked also. It's worth noting for LPL yesterday. Scaling is going to be a very interesting question, but may not be relevant if they can keep finding engaged like this. It looks like a 1 for 3, 1 v 3, but Ice is coming right into the fight. Just enough damage from both Zyra, Cannon, Elise, and then Pekka with the ulti. Now well we talk about the bot lane dive. TP yeah, being looking. used. That is Vegas teleport. Very safe. He, he can tax the bot lane now. There you go. Classic. Uh, <laughs> didn't actually get the castles, though. He was nice enough to just allow Prey to last at them. Many guy players, uh, many players cancel the GP. Faker stays for the farm. Slightly different strategy overall, but EU. About 1,000 gold. Mithy having to flash to safety, though, respecting the engage potential. Think so far, looking good. Looking bad for Baker, though. Garen in the bush. This is the classic. Haven't seen it since season three. And now Peke running for his life, but Mithy's here to back him up. All goes in. No silence on the Garen. They're going to take that one down. Peke now running for his life. He's going to get hooked up. Peke set to fall, and that's a shutdown on the fake. Pull me once, shame on me. Pull me twice, shame on you. The big story there, and what we saw in the first trade was the silence got so much value. The W came on late and Faker just got chunked out. This time, Silence was prepped. Every time he face checks, needs to have that on his mind, and they want more. They've already got two kills. They're looking at Reckless. The minion wave's not where it needs to be, though, so they're gonna back away, at least for now. Bliss going forward, getting aggressive, does have ultimate. Is he gonna use it? Yes, comes out. Getting aggressive here, Prank. Trying to heal up the minion wave. The minion wave's hitting him as well. Reckless, can he get this flash forward? Is he gonna be able to grab it? Oh! Yeah, he got it! One for one in the end, but now Fire moving onto the tower. Well, Reckless knew. More members of Team Fire were coming to the bottom lane, and there's no way out. Just had to try and take down Prey with him. Yank is in the top the lane. Acceleration gate Tacks waiting him with the slow. They can't look for the dive. Does hit the CC. There go the tentacles, and now it's a party under the tower. So as one final smack to take him down. And yeah, now the Lowry is getting fed. <laughs> so, so fed. Smet made that mistake before. Yes, Ilawi will not one-shot you at level 6, but if you stand in the tentacles, you will die, and he did. Peke is chasing Mad Life, the classic Garen Nautilus we often see. <laughs> really, when we look at this matchup, I mean, another round of spells ult will kill Mad Life here. Silence. Silence. And Faker will be there, doesn't have the ultimate. Nope, Duran not quite available yet, Bangy on the way in. No man to spam the axes. Peke have to play respect here. Ray on the backside, Peke maybe set the ball Garen. going in. Plan's gonna slow a little bit. Out comes the ultimate for the disengage. They're getting frisky, a lot of low health bars. And we've seen uh, Peke a few times now jump onto Fago after he got that kill. Only problem here for Garen is the animation when he's casting the Q to land that silence is sadly for Peke is slow enough that Fago often can just start shielding himself. Yep. And then the next, you know, spin to win thing doesn't really do that much. 
So whenever you see these trades, always look for like the Q first from Pekka and how fast Pekka gets up the shield. If the shield is up, Pekka can't really get him low enough to actually kill him. I had the pleasure of talking to Double Lift uh, on the Atlas deck yesterday during the game. I was talking about AD carry builds. You see a BF sword in the item and my itemization for Cannon, and his idea was basically IE into Shiv, IE into Hurricane, you're ready to go. Yeah. Do you think we'll actually see Infinity Edge Cannon here? Yeah. Because the build right now is so powerful on Zero Sum? Yeah, I, I definitely believe you will see just BF now, and then now you go for your Hurricane. Hurricane is, then... Hurricane's a Cannon special, exactly. right? Being able to get the W Brox. You sit on the BF, you get your Hurricane, then you get Infinity Edge, and maybe later you can get something like Blade of the Ruin King if you want that for the late game. But you also will need some sort of defensive item because there is quite a lot of champions here who's going to dive towards the back line of Europe. Of course, got to respect the potential for the flash engage from Faker. Flash a little bit of ways away, but Isle of Durand up and available. Additionally, the Olaf fearlessly can run in there. A lot of CC, but it's just not going to matter to him. You have to remember, Ilawi is the kind of champion, champion who wants you to dive the back line. Oh, yeah. Then you run right through like multiple tentacles, and it's a 2 0 Ilawi. So if Fink is up there now, he might actually die in a 1v2. I mean, vision control is just insanely strong. If you face check Team Ice, you got the Elawi, Cannon, Garen will spin to win. Of course, not even talking about the base damages from the Zyra. It's only Galio on the side of Team Fire that you get the same respect from. But regardless, both teams are going to be actively trying to get vision control because the face checks can explode a team in just a matter of seconds. Of course, the mid lane relatively even in terms of pressure, at least at this stage. Beke picking up those waves, but Bangi and Madlife are moving into the jungle. Just going to throw down some vision of their own. Clear out some of the vision that Ice have so diligently set up and right as the blue buff spawns. Well, this might actually be bad for LCK because the rest of Europe is moving in. Mithy not hitting the snare. Peke now taking quite some damage in mid. Blue buff Galio can just keep spamming away and Baker Getting aggressive here, not afraid to tank up the tower shots. No, he's uh, pretty tanky already. Garen, uh... Obviously, he's not the best scaling champion in the game. Nope. Need an Vintage if, if you want some sick damage late game. There is some synergy, though. Uh, very good at procking the Black Cleaver that he's already rushed down. So, as looks like he's going to be picking up one as well. So, they will be able to do Armor Shred for both the Alawi and the Cannon to do some good damage. Nice rotation from Fire. Garen exits lane and first tower of the game. Going to go to LCK. Big. Big buff to that gold differential, of course. Now evening it out. Five day maybe this kill score, but a 600 gold lead in favor of the LCK. Reckless backing off. He wants to pressure out the tower, but doesn't have the resources to do so. And it's a little bit tricky for Europe here to actually like make a play on the map because they can double teleport. Fega already used his down the bottom lane to get that kill very early on. And you really want to get this Garen out of the lane here. You want to get him to some of these side lanes where he can get onto like a squishy Ezreal, even a Jace. But Pekka is just not able to move because the wave is getting pushed by Faker all the time. I mean, you say you want to get him to side lane. You want to get him a side brush is what you want, actually. Right. You want him marshalling a big minion wave, then assassinating someone. It's too greedy to take it. Goes wide for it. He does have the ultimate. He's just waiting for the silence to time out. Now Bangy's in there. Oh. That's a party in the mid lane. Faker taking down with the Ignite. Wants a little bit more action, but Faker's going to make it out to safety. Have hit level 11 with that ult on two people. Already doing a lot of damage. Pokey on Faker, but poke damage will only heal him up. So another all-in to take down the Galio. And another situation where the animation of the Q from Garen is just too slow, so Faker gets up that shield, stays alive, and Bengi obviously there to make sure they pick up a kill, and Euro putting a lot of focus on that mid lane. Not something that we talked about early on. Didn't expect to see so much focus. Of course, didn't expect to see a Garen either. But Prey now in trouble, but the TP the coming Faker. in. Faker, of course, no ultimate available. Go for here. Does start to move forward, not at all scared to tank this one out. Has cannot afford to back up into the Zyra all, but will now be free to pull back. Now it looks like LCK going to pressure the bottom side tower. Really interesting to see if Faker puts some more points into his W. Will make any health stackers unkillable with the 75 armor and magic resistance provides for now. Looks like he's maxing at second, so he's still tanky when he pops the W, but he's not unkillable like he is when he has five points and that runic ball. And you have to go for an awkward build as a Galio, not being able to go for any magic resistance because you're against so many physical damage dealers on the side of Europe here. Top lane is still going lower and lower because Soas is just like hammering away on the tower and he can kill Smep if he wants to now. Pretty fed Ilawi. Sadly for Europe, they're not able to kind of speed up the game right now. I mean, I was actually surprised he was able to teleport in the face of an Ilawi 
with the you know two AD items so confidently as the squishy Jace, but it worked out so far. He does have the item advantage. So as hasn't been able to shop. Level advantage. So as going to use the ult here. Wants to throw down some damage. Jace pulling back, but pulling into enemy territory will be cursed up. Tentacles going to slap. Tentacles going to spawn. But the towers dropped. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, Nengi is on his way up. So Meb, can he live long enough to get his jungler into the fight? Garen is there as well. But so as oh, got his eyes on the prize. It's Meb with the fancy footwork going to live at least so far. No ult for so as. Peke is coming. So is Yankos. Garen moving in. Is he going to get anything? Gets the minions. What? That <laughs> worth it for Peke. He gets the minions on top side. So us almost taking down Smep again up in that top lane. But bot lane tower did go down. LCK 2000 gold lead now. And the question is, how much does Garen do if you start losing in a turret? Even once you lose your outer turret, suddenly there's a lot less space that you can right. really guarantee is going to be unchecked. And then suddenly the Schrodinger's <laughs> bush situation with the Garen becomes more and more predictable. I mean, how much is Ilawi, Garen, and AD Kennen really going to do when Wait, you're behind? Wait, put a number on this one, Mark. <laughs> Come on, Deficio. How much are they going to do? Basically nothing. <laughs> if they fall really far behind, it is still okay for Europe. They have some good first items. They're only 2,000 gold down. As this is one team fight, and then it's an ace for Europe, and suddenly, you know, it's a Baron just predicting what's going to happen in about five, six minutes. Bank is coming top lane again. Oh, so as got caught out on day one, it looks like day three will be a similar story. Pulling back, Test of Spirit does get denied. There's no ulti sadly for Source, just a few seconds. Doesn't connect, he's trying to bait him in. Knows he can Bing is so fight. afraid all the time, <laughs> also because Europe is coming again. Collapse onto the top side a lot. This is the wombo combo potential we talked about this in is Champion him. Select. Well, Bangy, the they they're gonna go wall. forward. Bangy can't get the plant, can he make it out? Doesn't look like it, yes! No! Gets knocked out mid-air, reckless. Cutting him down, fire. Or fire, yeah, falling a little short there, and Peke's already on the bottom side. What is LCK's next move? A lot of these uh, turrets here are very low now. Baker trying to go for Peke. Realizes he doesn't want to go into the rush against the Garen. Just gonna keep running this one out. Does do a lot of damage here, has the blue buff. We talked about this before. It's gonna be a long, That's slow teleport. Duel. Knight does go down, trying to deny the healing. Baker, who's on the way in, so as is here. Prey is here as well. There's not any CC. Want to get more damage, but not enough. Garen Alt is not going to be there, but Baker caught out. That's a lot! Mifty from over the wall! Looks like Mad Life could be next. That's a lot of burst damage right up front. Soaz looking for a little bit more. As you all not going to connect. Mad Life trying to make it out. Prey looking for the disengage for his team, but Mifty flat forward. He connects it. Yanko's yeah, not going to have the cocoon follow up. Nice mechanics, but they know they can't continue to follow up. Bengi had already respawned. They still get their first turret of the game, the outer in the bot lane. Ocean Drake has spawned, but they don't feel confident enough to start it just yet. And Jace looks like he's going to get the third out of turret. So out of drink will go down, probably at the cost of this Ocean Drake. Now the mid lane tower, the tier one mid lane tower for LCK is about 50%. Top lane tower is like 5 HP, one hit only. So there will be a lot of gold for Europe to pick up very, very soon if they can actually get to these towers here. I'm, so, I'm sure Source will get the top tower. I mean, it's only a support Nautilus, so that's enough to dissuade. But we will go back and Don't look worry. at this. Baker overextends. Smeb did not have TP. Did it to get back to top lane to get, complete the push that he'll be doing about a minute ago. And it looks like he was going to get away on just a sliver of HP, but Mithy is in the right spot. Absolutely makes the hero play here. A beautiful snare alt over the wall. Zyra damage more than enough to finish it out. And so close to taking down Mad Life as well as we close out that replay. And you mentioned the tower differential here. EU could potentially take two more towers if they take one of those alongside the double Ocean Drakes and 200 gold lead. But still, advantage to EU. This mid game looking pretty solid so far. Yeah, equal in gold, but with you know just a sliver on mid lane, you can say effectively about a thousand gold in just a couple of seconds. But if they can't get access to that mid lane to keep it pushing, it is just a line ball game, which is awesome to see. Let's be real. But again, we have now seen Europe for the last five minutes get Garen out of the mid lane and actually start moving around. They're going for Faker. Oh, stun goes in. Silence goes in. He's not going to be able to ult. Will he get it up in time? Yes, that's a massive seal from the Courage of the Colossus, but not enough Courage to close this one out. Peke says die, Baker die, and makes it look all too I mean, easy. no one was coming. There's three on the top side of the map. They're going to steal away a red buff, get control over Baron, but no other real objectives to contest. So it's just free kills over to Team Ice. Europe might try and go for the mid tower, but the rest of LCK is already here trying to defend. 20 minutes and the gold is dead even. This could be the fight. It shifts it back into the favor of either one of these lineups. Nice backing off, fire backing off as well. Not picking this fight instead, turning their attention to the top side. Yeah, so it's got that tower with the minions. Did decide to stay around. Tried to go for that 
1v2, but... Yeah, I didn't even catch this one, so it was a 1v1 across the map. Of course, a lot of pressure now on the top side of the map. Smeb continuing to push out despite his early struggles in lane against the Alawi, at least with the support of the Yankos. Not really amounting to too much at this point in the game. There'll still be some very, very explosive minutes now. If we look at like Ilawi and Garen, like these bruises often like a strong early game, but then also like in the mid game on one to two items, they can take down like so many of these squishy targets so easily and still be fairly tanky at the same time. We haven't really hit the late game where they suddenly start falling out, like run out of damage, especially the Garen. Ilawi will always have damage. Well, and of course, speaking of hitting those two item points, Smeb picking up a mortal reminder so early on against an Ilawi feels really impactful. Yeah, I was watching the Kespa Cup, and specifically in the final, as Mengi's going to face check, but he has a Banshee Veil, he'll be all right. Uh, specifically in the final, against Poppy, his build was very similar. That cleaver into armor penetration was able to beat Poppy, should be oh, good yeah. here as Mengi. Now he goes down, he's going for more. Pengi just does not care. Multiple members in front of him. Mengi going to live anyway. Mad Life is the one taking all the damage, though. It's absolutely massive in the favor of Team Ice, but now they have to run. There's too many low health bars, and Peke is a man possessed as he leaps in time and time again. It's not the top Nautilus that can just teleport in impact fights. It is the Jacer, even though he has teleport, very much a defensive teleport user. It's going to stay push up bot and another free kill. But over the ice. It's what we talked about with these Bruces. Again, they have damage here in the mid game. They're tanky enough to like be super aggressive, and Pekka just showed that once again. Another easy pick up here. Yang has been able to land some very easy cocoons because targets are CC to knock up, and he picks up his second kill. So, very, very even game so far. You're just finishing off the point on the double armor penetration rush from the Jace. If it's enough to take down Poppy, theoretically it should be enough to take down Soaz. And given we were kind of pigeonholed into thinking Poppy beats Jace after about two armor items, very interesting to keep tracking that even in this matchup. I think you can criticize getting the Last Whisper as a second item. I think if you want the healing reduction, you get the Executioner's Calling, and then you complete another item, and then as a third item, you get the Last Whisper. Because if you look at Europe and the itemization, there isn't that much armor you're really going to penetrate because it's the only bonus armor you're going for. It's literally just a little bit on source, and that's the only thing. So it's not the most effective item now, mm -hmm. but obviously he's expecting very soon to, to see more armor on the side of Europe, and then he knows, okay, I need to have that item ready for that potential big fight. And probably does have those bonus scalings as well. Bengi wants to track Soaz once again. Ghosting in, we've seen this before. Soaz, can he turn up the healing reduction? is absolutely massive in this exchange. Does get knocked out. Smet potentially in trouble, but Bengi is going to pick that one up quite easily. Smep seems to be figuring out the uh, Alawi slowly, slowly. Again, would have only had limited practice even in solo queue against this pick. So a couple of kills, a bit of confidence boost to the side of fire as Becky and Faker are still having at it, this time in the top. Not going to be a whole lot of damage traded back and forth, though. Of course, Garen usually going to heal it up. And Galio pretty quick to deny that damage, especially with the now completed Zanya's Hourglass. As we check in on the bottom lane, Prey pretty content at that two item spike and Reckless, you talked about it. This is the 80 carry itemization across the board, Infinity Edge and the Rune Ant. This tells you how strong this pair of items is that even on a champion like Cannon without the same steroids as other attack damage carries, it's still Infinity Edge, Hurricane as the staple. Ultimate's very much going to be purely for disengage. Won't see this cannon diving in like an AP cannon, but we'll be able to peel away someone diving. Unless, of course, the Ragnarok is popped by Ben. Meanwhile, Smash is going to take down that tower uncontested. Ice not willing to give up the resources to stop him, and now he's going to get a blue buff as well. And now with obviously Soas completing that randoing completely, and Smep just focusing purely on the 1v1, the last Whisper is going to do a lot of good for him against Soas. Won't really do anything against the other four members, but I don't think he cares, because they keep just ganking Soas and taking him down fast enough. And also awesome. ganking Baker as well, moving forward. Yankos does land soon. I don't know if they have enough damage, but that's a lot coming in from Max Peke. It's safely under the tower. TP coming in now, they look like they may extend the fight, will be fully completed. Now, Smep uh, moving forward, is going to throw down a bit more damage. Bangy's on the backside, he's already ulted though, and it may be a little bit too early. Smep's taken down X Peke. the damage from Jace, a little bit too much. Now they're going to have to run for their life. Flash ball from Yankos, he's in trouble. Zaz is finally in the fight, is he going to get the ult down? Yes, only hits one though. Maybe looking for a little bit more, no test of spirit quite yet. Depth charge goes in, and down goes Yankos, so as to fight now like a man possessed. The healing reduction will come in. That's a lot going over the wall. Soaz wants a little more. Can he get prey? Not gonna get it. Mithy on the way in. Fire absolutely cleaning house here and Ice just getting crushed. Yeah, the predicted big team fight win for Europe that was going to happen within five minutes actually went in favor of LCK and I feel like we've seen that before. It's a good start from the other team. It's, it's a fairly early mid to, uh, mid to early and mid game. And then big fight, LCK punishes. And now they're taking Baron. But nothing Reckless does a lot of damage here, so they have to be careful. 
Kind of poking into the fight. They're going to try to CC him, but Nautilus is going to hook the wall instead. Going a little bit lower. Ever closer to that spine point. They are going to get it in the end. Reckless not going to even get the 1v1. Smeb making it out. Dangerous game just a bit too much. Taking it to safety with a sliver of his life. And that's going to be Baron secured for the LCK and Team Fire. We're going to finally get the replay here. So Peke had gone very aggressively onto Faker. Eats the slow, turns in, and with the double armor penetration, it's gonna go down just completely to the Jace, and then it's just really scattered. Reckless has to use his ult, runs away himself, but fighting on two fights. Mad Life flashes in just to look for an auto attack to attract targets, and even though these are fed bruisers, they're not fighting as five, they're fighting as exactly. one, B2, B3, and eventually come tumbling down. Yeah, Source has to teleport in like behind the rest of his team, only got ult in one member, really didn't get to use any of the team fighting presence Ilawi can have, even though she's obviously much better when it comes to like the early laning phase. Still strong at this point if you get that 3-4 man ulti. Same can be said for Cannon, for Zyra. Like it's a lot of AoE on the side of Europe, but when you split up, well, AoE suddenly is very hard to use. We talk a lot about Europe needing to group up, looking for that sort of wombo team fight where they can land everything in succession. However, what is now path for fire? Other than picking up a kill on Mithy. Good he start. Might be able to do. Ooh, nice flash out on the end. Side step on the axe. Mithy making some fancy footwork. The chilling smite. Gonna cut his dreams down. And Tengi just gonna pick up a little redemption. Pops the flare as well. Suddenly playing with the confidence that we didn't see in the early game. They're looking to get on Faker. Faker moving forward. Decent damage coming in from the Olawi, but so has taking so much back in return. That's the fear not gonna get Brock quite yet now. Gonna be cursed up. Decent damage. The team is on the way. We could be looking at a full fight. Faker going to drop. That's a good start to it, but Peke's getting taken down on the backside. Mad Life, Prey, Bangi moving forward. Yankos, not quite sure where he wants to go. Will to start to back off. Bangi, no ultimate available to pursue, and Reckless waiting over the other side of the wall. The gold lead now is really starting to shine through. It wasn't one for the majority of the game, but 7,000, especially with that Baron take. The items are starting to be loaded up, and it's Talisman of Ascension from the jungle from Bengi. Didn't want to go for the selfish speed up of Righteous Glory. It's now the team wide speed up with the Talisman. Tower is going to fall. Reckless doing his best to clear out the waves, but it's simply not enough. Hopsmith, you're absolutely right. It's just looking harder and harder. Seems like a pretty clean closeout from Team Fire if they play right. I mean, is it still looking for opportunities here? Which is nice. We talked about it. When the inner turrets go down, it has to be just super hard engage in vision as melee bruises. And that so rarely works at the highest level. Exactly. It's really, really hard for Europe to like start a team fight by hard engaging. They need to like flank oh, around. He's getting picked off. Bangy just going to use the Ragnarok to make his way out. A decent amount of damage. Prox going down on the mark of the storm, but not enough. Good stunned up here. Cocoon does connect on the right, but only four members left, so has a lot of power on the allow. He does hit two with the technical slam. Peke going in. Does get burned down instantly. The Jace damage. Too much. So as though holds up. Test Spirit goes down. Mad Life gonna be set to fall. They're trading back and forth here. But the thing you need to take away, the thing we're kind of hitting hard on is if these champions stand 5v5 in the lane ARAM style, Ice don't have a, fire, a, a fight starter. That's not reckless. It's AD Cannon is about being in disengage. There is a lot of initiation from fire. And unfortunately for Ice, unless they fight a fight on the terms of LCK that they misjudge, they're not going to get the fight they're looking for. Well, sadly for Europe, the way back might be hoping LCK makes a mistake around an objective and uh, they yes. have multiple lanes. but. I feel like we've said that before, <laughs> and it almost has never happened when you're playing the Korean squad here, and it's, it is difficult. It's been a very fun game to watch, though, with so many different <laughs> fights and these different picks. Mythia, sadly for him, tried oh, to beat boy. the guy engaging, and does go down. And let's see here. Fight around the blue buff. Oh, oh Yanko takes a lot of damage. Baker maybe looks for that one. Flash got in. Idol of Durant. Yanko's going to get dropped there. Smeb more than happy to take the blue buff. Fischio, you mean you brought up Mithy? So happy to be the playmaker in that early stage of the game, but now no longer is it just base levels and base items. Everyone getting more and more in Mithy, of course. No tanky stats. Really keep him alive. And that's the case late game. is so, so strong as well. Like Faker, not really getting one shot anymore. Ezra has these items to deal with bruises. So as has to be careful. Get picked up here. Whoa! Oh, hits a couple people. Max Pekin trying to disengage on Bangi. A lot of damage as Tessa Spirit goes down. Bangi. Make it out. The tower has already fallen, but a lot of members cursed up on the side of Team Fire. So as too low to continue, and Fire just going to grab this inhibitor. A little brawl there, but no one going to drop other than Yank. So many speed ups as well. Acceleration gate, the righteous gust from the Galio, able to get away very quickly after picking up the objective. And suddenly, not many camps on the map to pick up. Not many minions pushing in. 
This is very much the Korean standard when it comes to the late game, where there's not many resources for EU, and if they make it engage at 10,000 gold behind, even though their champions do well in melee range, not going to be fought on that turn. Bengi now running out. Not a whole ton of damage here, but this one starts to move forward. Mount. Will Bengi start to turn? Throws the axe back to try to disengage. Ghost has been popped. It may just be the pick here for Yanko's hand, but there's people on the way. I don't know if he's going to be able to grab it. Just looking for the Venomous Bite to close out. Will not need it. So well, could be the highest of Spirit. He's trapped, though. He's all alone. Flashes up the wall. Death Charge still going to connect. It's going to hit two as well. Zoas has to back off. He's damage coming from the backside from Prey. Ice now retreating in the top lane. Garen split pushing, meanwhile, on the bottom side. Ex Peke. <laughs> <laughs> Brought out the Garen. Ah, the double to teleport. Something wrong about double teleport being against an EU team, against the Peke team. Uh, really well played by LCK with the teleports all game long, honestly. Bad life might go down. Reckless, keep your eyes on the cannon. Does have the ultimate available. And Yanko's fearless on the front line, but he may get popped. Smeb is locked up. Tentacle smash goes down. Not going to connect. Redemption going in looking for the heal, but who is it? Going to be inside a team fire. Soaz now gets the test of spirit. Mad life could be in trouble. Soaz staying around the tower to tank it out, but shut down onto Smeb. He gets caught out. The next Peke is still alive on the bottom side. Yeah, he's one versus two here. Faker going for him. Gets the slow. Really fast. Starting to spin. TP coming in. Can they burn him down? Nice footwork to move it out. Galio skill shots very slow, so as is here, he wants to start a party, the tentacles are coming down. Will they be able to cut through him? Test of Spirit, Prey, now cursed, but he doesn't have any way to chase these guys down. Prey's one of the best at going in and out of fights, he's not going to allow Soaz to escape, but oh, there's another, another Spirit, that could be massive, can he do anything? No, Prey, walking out unscathed. And the W also gives him the bonus resist, so more than happy to once again go into close range. Still fights across the map, but all in the context of Korea bring pretty significantly ahead. Wait, Becca, you want to see if you can take the red buff? And then, obviously, oh, they're going Baker. out. A little bit out, having <laughs> well, fun pretty, here. That yeah. was pretty good. I mean, never question oh. Pekka when it comes to split pushing and escaping. And that's a preview, of course, of the uh, some of the mechanics in the jungle, the plants that we'll see in the future season, of course, at this point. Still trying to extend really any way to get uh, out. And all of your recall, instead of taking that free tower, because they're trying to make it all the way down to the bottom lane, See if they can join. You can see Reckless need the base as well, but also actually had super minions at the next turn they had to go back and deal with. So fair enough, take that one back. Europe had to go actually had to go back and defend the turret. You can see the one next to on your minimap is very, very low. Of course, Prey clearing out the minion wave as best he can because it is now barren time. You laying down a bit of vision to try to secure the area. Now like maybe oversetting here, but the snare not gonna connect. Backing off, fire just moved right in, and Europe not comfortable enough to take this fight without knowing where everyone is. And Bengi, another support item. He knows exactly his place, guys. He's always been. I mean, this is his job application. Yeah, I'm a supportive jungler, please. I mean, there's three years of like proof, four years perhaps, to show that. But once again, the Knights of Vow also. I don't actually see who he's linked to. It would be kind of lore appropriate if it was Faker. Could definitely be Faker. I mean, that's who you put. Might your be the Ezreal on. or the Jace. It is the Ezreal. Ooh, I mean, it should be Faker. Obviously, AD carry. With the extra damage, he can deal for some more HP coming towards you as an Olaf. I mean, if Faker's the king, Bengi's definitely the knight. So that's why I thought he might go for it. Bengi's the princess. That's princess, huh? Yeah, he's the princess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what led you to that conclusion, and I don't want to know. I thought, I thought Flame was the princess. Yeah. That's, that's the actually true. <laughs> there can be more. A lot of royalty in League of Legends. A lot of royalty here, of course, on the stage as well. It's Peke busting out the gear in this game. It started so well, but it's kind of been going downhill, just not having quite enough damage here in these fights. And so as Glowy looks terrifying, but yeah. uh, the ultimate counter, of course, people are just going to walk away. Again, it is sadly some of the things we mentioned. You know, these bruises being so good in the mid game on one to two items, but then later on, the other team starts getting a bit of armor. It gets really, really difficult then to kind of burn through all of it and take down these fights, unless you get that big 5 on 5 team fight where all your AoE works. But LCK is not going to give you that fight. You know, find the opportunity to pray, though. We'll find the opportunity to take the blue buff here. Baron remains. The big objective on the map is you holding on to dear life at this point. An 8k gold differential, 35 minutes in. It's two dragons to two. The Mountain Drake for LCK makes that Baron all the more threatening, as well as the insane amount of AD threats between the Jace and the Ezreal. And when you move away from the mid game, you know, once you get a couple of items for Prey, he's Ezreal, he's slippery, slippery already. He's got the Blade of the Ruin King now. He's always been a counter pick to picks like Aurelia in the top lane just because he is that mobile AD carry. So just closing the distance on Prey and killing him instantly, hard to do. Uh, so as caught out once again, healing's reduced, and oh. that means he's going to get popped instantly. Too much damage. 
Not enough armor. Lord Dominic as well as the Mortal Reminder. He's not going to find anything there. And now Mithy, the one in trouble, does look for the ult to disengage, but may get caught out. Does sidestep in the end. Shock Blast going to take him. Baker looking for the 2v1 in the meantime, but Peke going to grab another kill. Redemption comes down. Not going to save anyone. His prey goes on a rampage. I say worth for Europe. They kill Faker. Yeah. You're going to lose your you next get. anyway. Might as well take down Faker another time. <laughs> Commanding early game coming in for Europe in a few close scrappy duels, but once Fire finds the lead, once we get out of that mid game, it is LCK who've been able to find it, close it out with confidence. Reckless with one last desperate play, but Yankos gets popped. Reckless is next on the menu, not even gonna make it into the spawn as the ace comes out from the LCK. Team Fire looking to pick up 100 points here, and Korea reminding us why they are on top of the world. An all star lineup crushing through each and every other region. Yep, 3 0. Not like we ever forgot it. I oh. mean, I don't think there was anyone. I forgot for about 30 seconds when XPK got that Garen double kill. Very true. We had a brief moment where we were like, oh, this is it. Just like last year where Europe took him down. Nope. LCK, 300 points obviously picked up by these guys in these. Uh, Regional clashes. And picking up the slack of some of the struggles that Team Fire actually has had in the fun modes. And the fun modes have gone pretty much over Team Ice, and they're in a really good spot also okay. when the shorts. one ones. The shorts being repped. Nice shorts. Feels appropriate the bruisers uh, were played in that game. Funny story. All